Nice train set you got there, viewer. Which way is it the short line? Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and today we're going to take a look at another GoBot review. Since this day is National Railroad Day, we're going to take a look at a GoBot train. This is the Renegade GoBot known as Loco. Loco would be released around 1984. And he would be available for a very limited time on the shelves, but he would continue to make appearances throughout the cartoon series, for better or for worse. Now, of course, those of you that know some linguistic skills would know that loco is also Spanish for crazy. And, of course... In the early tech specs that were written for many of the GoBots, Loco was intended to be a rather crazy character, but that was that idea was dropped, unfortunately, and never really resurfaced in any of the media. The most distinguishing thing you can see about Loco is how solidly black he is. When he does possess a fair amount of chrome and a lot of red details as well. You'll want to be cautious, collectors, because some of these red details, the paint on this, is pretty easily worn off, as you can see here. Get it at a good angle here on his legs, especially. As you can see, the right leg. The red is pretty decent, but a few of them here on the left leg, the red paint is wearing off. Another spot where that is potential is on the side panels here next to his head. That's another good area where a lot of it wears very easily. See it right here on this side. This A lot of this on the edge, the red paint is wearing off. But of course, some of the black doesn't hold up very well as well. The sides here, I don't know if it's catching very well on the camera, but some of the side paint on the roof of what would be the engine for the train, the engineer's compartment for the train, it also wears pretty easily. So it's something to keep an eye out for. Articulation-wise, Loco has a fair amount going for him, despite the fact that it's mostly used for converting him into his alternate mode. He does have a joint at the shoulder, so he is able to rotate his arm all the way around, provided you don't push it in like I just did there. And he does have a joint at the hip, so he can bring his legs up, like so. Kind of looking like an amateur member of the Radio City Rockettes. <laughs> Let's take a moment here to convert Loco. And as you can tell, he is a pretty simple conversion. You start by lowering his arms straight down and then you push them in at the shoulders. Like so. And then you're going to take his legs and you just fold them up over his chest. And there is his alternate mode, a locomotive. Specifically, he is a JNR D51 steam locomotive. And he's something of a decent replica of one. I mean, he's not perfect, partially due to the fact that Take a good close look. The black color makes it hard to see, but it's kind of the arms do kind of stick out a bit on this. But it is a rather decent representation of this particular model of locomotive. Unlike, say, 
the similar one that's in the Transformer line, Astro Train. Of course, the big difference on Astro Train is due to the fact that since he's a triple changer, he's got to have the rocket boosters very prominently shown at the back. So, in a lot of ways, Astro Train there kind of blows it out of the water, whereas Loco could pass easier for a locomotive. Set Astro Train aside here. Now, Loco does have little silver wheels at the bottom. He has two large ones along the sides of his legs, and of course, he has a second, a third wheel underneath train itself. So let's see, how does he roll along this table? Well, fair to say the least. Let's give him a... Now if you putter him along a little bit, he rolls pretty good. Chugga, 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 chugga. Like we always did as kids, but give him a little too much force and it's a little better. Maybe it was just the way I hit him earlier. Rolls okay on this table. But he's also not at the same scale as many model train sets are released. So, unfortunately, it's a little hard to set him up for a display where he's actually on some train tracks. So, that's the only real pity regarding Loco. Now, moving on to loose pieces, in a lot of cases, Loco would not necessarily have them, but he does. These panels on the side of his head do come off very, very easily. Well, maybe not very, very easily, but they are removable. like that. We can bring them up here to the camera so you can see them. And there they are. These side panels along the sides of his head are removable. So you can kind of see here that's kind of how he looks without them. I think the panels really help enhance his look because the way, he, the way his head looks now, he could almost pass like he's a Dick Tracy villain. You know? Meet the latest villain, Buckethead. Oops, there they go under the carpet. Good thing this carpet's not that thick. But anyway, we'll take a look at one of them here on the back side, and you can see on the back side they are solid black, but they do have two very small plastic prongs, and that's how they connect onto the side of Loco's head. So we got the other one here in my other hand, so you can get a look at that one too. So as you can imagine, if these are missing from your sample, good luck finding loose ones of these parts. Because as you can imagine, with how tiny they are, they are very difficult to replace. And this is probably what led him to be pulled off of the shelves early, is due to the fact these pieces are relatively small, and obviously they would fit inside an empty roll of toilet paper, which is what the Consumer Product Safety Commission uses to tell if a toy could be swallowed by a child. So obviously these would present a hazard to very young children. So keep that in mind as well, collectors. If you do have a, want a loco in your house and you've got a young kid, keep loco away from them. Now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of loco? Loco has always been one of my favorite GoBots, and he's always been one of my favorite toys as a child. A lot of the wear and tear that you see on this one, this is my original Loco from 1984. And despite a lot of the paint wear that he has, he's in pretty good shape. Despite all the adventures he and I went on. 
But in a lot of cases here, Loco's different, and that's what I like about him the most. It wasn't very common in a lot of these transforming robot toys to get somebody that's a train. I mean, obviously, they're not going to be able to travel across the land like many of the others due to the fact that they're restricted to the train tracks in order to hide. But, again, it brings about the whole robots in disguise thing that the Transformers were always pushing. And to be in disguise would be hidden in plain sight. And unless you're a major train enthusiast, which they do have a lot of in Japan where the toy originated from, a lot of us really don't pay attention to one as it glides by. Especially as we sit there at the railroad crossing waiting for it to get finished traveling by so we can continue on our merry way. So that's the aspect I always liked about Loco. The cartoon appearances, eh, they could have been better, but given the source material and what they had to work with, I think they did an okay job dealing with Loco. Now, if they had been allowed to use the original written bios about Loco, which did present him as being rather crazy, that might have made him more interesting. It's the one thing that I've always wondered, especially moreover after reading about the original bios for the GoBots, that if Tonka had presented them to Hanna-Barbera to use for the cartoon, maybe they might have developed the series a little bit better. But at any rate, despite my personal biases for Loco, I'm going to certainly put him in the middle tier. I mean, he's certainly not an outstanding figure by any stretch of the imagination, and his conversion from robot to train, it is very simple, and it is one of them that many of the GoBot haters out there on the internet would point out of the simplistic nature. But, his simplistic nature for conversion is about on par with a lot of the mini-vehicles that the Transformers put out. So, you really can't knock it for that. I think the biggest knock that goes against Loco is the fact that he is pretty limited on how he can travel. I mean, granted, in the cartoon, he didn't really need the train tracks to travel around. He'd go wherever he pleased, but if he was to really be in disguise on Earth, he would be limited to staying on the train tracks, and that has the double-edged sword of, while it would allow him some means of passing through undetected, the limitation of having to travel only by the rails would hinder his effectiveness. But overall, I don't like to hold that against him too much. Because after all, sometimes that may be the best way to go. And Loco certainly has that covered. And that concludes my review of the Renegade Gobot Loco. If you like the video, please leave a thumbs up here on YouTube. Don't forget as well, hit that subscribe button down below and join up with the rest of us changing robot toy fanatics. And please also consider leaving your thoughts about Loco in the comments section down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.